In this video, we're going to quickly overclock and benchmark a Radeon HD 7570 graphics card. The HD 7570 is a low-powered, entry-level card first introduced in early 2012. This card is in many ways extremely similar to the Radeon HD 6570 we previously tested. I'm a bit more optimistic on the HD 7570, however, thanks to many versions of this card having much better quality memory. So I'm thinking with this card, depending on how the memory holds up and how well the overclock goes, can we pull out some solid 900p or 1080p performance from it? Stick around because we're about to find out. So what are we looking at here? The Radeon HD 7570 is based on the Turks Pro L graphics processor, has 480 shading units, and supports DirectX 11.2. This card runs at 650 MHz core clock and between 500 and 800 MHz memory clock. The card comes in both low profile and full height versions and features a single cooling fan. The HD 7570 comes with either 1GB or 2GB of GDDR3 or GDDR5 memory. The example card we have here is the Dell HD 7570. It features 1 gigabyte of GDDR5 memory, so it's certainly one of the better versions of this card that's available. So let's get ready to overclock and benchmark this thing and see what kind of performance we can get out of it. The first thing we're going to want to do is update the drivers. Let's jump over to AMD real quick and grab the latest ones. Now that our drivers are nice and updated, the next step is to install an overclocking program called MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is a totally free tool that gives you a high degree of control and monitoring over your graphics card. It's made by MSI the company, but in no way do you have to use it with an MSI brand of card or anything like that. Now that MSI Afterburner is installed, let's run through the key settings we'll be using. With this card, we'll be focusing on the core clock and memory clock values in the middle section here. We can see that the fan speed is currently set to auto. You can switch this off and manually select the fan speed, but for this video, we're just going to leave it on auto. One thing we're going to need to do for this card and for a lot of other AMD cards is extend the overclocking limits. To do this, first go to properties, then check the box labeled extend official overclocking limits. You'll then need to reboot the computer to open up a larger range of possible overclock. Okay, now that we've got that done, let's check out the other features. Now, you can always reset your settings back to the default by clicking on the reverse arrow at the bottom. Once you're satisfied with your changes, you can click the check button to apply them. You can save your current settings to a profile by clicking the save button, then clicking on one of the profiles along the right hand side. Finally, you can have the current settings automatically apply at Windows Startup by clicking the Windows icon in the upper right corner. Now I'm going to display a list of known successful HD 7570 overclocks on the screen, as well as in the description. Every card is different, but this should give you a nice starting point for potential overclock values that may work for you. Now that we've locked in some potential overclock settings, we're going to want to test them. We'll be running through five programs with benchmarks to test our overclock for stability and performance. What I'll do first is run through all five benchmarks using stock settings to measure base level performance numbers. Then I'll select a minor initial increase in both core clock and memory clock values. I'll then run through the Unigen benchmark tool over and over while increasing the overclock values slightly each time. Once the settings have been pushed too far and I start seeing crashing, graphical glitches, or other types of odd behavior, I'll dial back the settings to what they were just previously when everything was still running smooth. At this point, I now have a solid idea of where the sweet spot is for overclocking my particular card. I can either stick with those settings or try tweaking things just a little further. After a number of tests, this particular card was able to reach a solid overclock of 780 MHz core clock and 900 MHz memory clock. This is looking promising for sure. Let's run through each of the five benchmarks to see how the HD 7570 perform. First up, it's Unigen, Superposition Benchmark Tool. Running at the 1080p medium preset, the base score came in at 699. After overclocking, the score improved to 823. This represents an increase of 17.7%. Not bad, but the one gigabyte of memory on this card may be holding us back a bit here. Next up, we've got CSGO Benchmark Map. Running at 1080p with all the settings turned down to the lowest values, the initial test achieved an overall average FPS of 59.8. 
After overclocking, average FPS increased to 71.2. That's an increase of 19.1%. So it's nice to see we've got some playable 1080p numbers, even though this title is fairly light on the requirements. Benchmark number three is Grand Theft Auto V Benchmark. Running at 1080p, 50% resolution scaling, and everything turned down as low as it would go, our initial average FPS was 69.2. After overclock, average FPS increased to 81.1. That's an increase of 17.2%. So, not a bad increase, and we seem to be developing a bit of a pattern here. Our fourth test is Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker Benchmark Tool. Running at the 1080p standard preset, initial results achieved a score of 2860, or slightly low rating. After overclocking, the score improved to 3332, also slightly low rating. This represents an increase of 16.5%. So, nothing major, but a solid increase nonetheless. For Benchmark 5, we have Borderlands 3 Benchmark. Running at 1080p, 50% resolution scaling, and everything turned down to the lowest settings, the initial average FPS came out to 19.5. After overclocking, average FPS increased to 23.1. That's an increase of 18.5%. A solid increase for sure, but perhaps a bit short of a playable experience with this title. So, how'd we do with this Radeon HD 7570? I'd have to say I'm a bit surprised and impressed that we were able to pull some minimal 1080p performance from it. However, just be aware that the quality of memory plays a significant role in the performance of these types of cards. Please feel free to leave a comment, and thanks so much for watching.